silence is the most potent thing you can do. It's the thing that can probably make the biggest impact in your life. Um, simply because the universe communicates through silence. Hello, we are back with another active ingredient solo episode. And this one I'm doing both video and audio right here with my little mic. Um, so for those of you who are listening on podcasts, active ingredient now has a YouTube channel and I am putting myself kind of a little bit out of my comfort zone doing this. This is the first solo I've ever done on video. Every time that I do it, I always just record it with my, sometimes just my computer, sometimes on my phone, sometimes on my podcast, like audio equipment. And I am putting myself out there a little bit more because I've just found that people, you know, like to consume content in different ways. And I, this can easily live on both video and um, audio. So I'm just trying something new and see how it goes and see if you guys like both video and audio a little bit more. I'm always open to feedback. So anything that you guys want to share with me, please send. But anyway, this is absolutely not about me. This channel is not about me. It's about sharing things that have either worked for me, um, things that I feel like in my soul and my heart to be true. Um, and that I just, I really want to share, um, my journey and how I've kind of got into this place, which is this place being the most aligned I've ever felt in my whole life. Having started this podcast, really always looking for answers externally, um, and through conversations and through doing a lot of this work that I've done on myself um, for years. I mean, I guess you can say throughout your entirety of your life, but um, I've been like consciously aware of it and consciously choosing it and practicing it probably for like three years now. Um, I really want to share the things that have worked for me and the things that I have found to be like the most potent or the most true things. Um, and really not so much in like a preachy way, like you must try this, but in just a way of like, if something strikes a chord with you, like ask yourself, why does it strike a chord with me? Like, what is it about like what I'm saying that could potentially be of interest to you? And I always am such an advocate for following your curiosity. Um, and if nothing that I'm saying with you is landing, that's totally fine too, you know? Um, I just, I wanted to kind of expand the horizon of how I'm communicating these things because it's been podcast only for two and a half years. And, um, I invested in an amazing podcast team and they are able to help me kind of make this come to life, both on YouTube and on, um, podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. So today's podcast is kind of a piggyback off of the 2022 resolution or kind of like the, not the anti-resolution, but just like a really intentional kind of inventory check on what works and what doesn't. And the overarching theme for my year being creating this space to be in silence. And I've talked about silence a ton. I actually, I think I did a whole solo episode on silence. It is worth having several episodes to talk about the silence, because even though I might sound like a broken record, it's like one of those things that's just worth talking about in as many ways and as many vehicles as possible, because, and it's funny because this is a podcast, you're listening to it. You were currently not in silence. Like I'm speaking, but I think it's so important to understand the why behind anything that you want to try on. So if you're going to try on like putting yourself through a silent moment or whatever that looks for you, I think it's super important to understand, like, at least for me, it's, it's important to understand why, like what's, what's, the reasoning behind it. Like, what are the benefits from doing that? Like, what's the benefit of putting myself through something that's extremely uncomfortable. And I have found in every single thing that I have done, I've tried everything, honestly. Like I, I tried starting this podcast and talking to other people. I tried doing it through osmosis. I've tried therapy. I've tried massage and all of those things are really, really amazing tools and they all work. But what happens when you actually actively practice silence is that you're start, you start to choose the things, the therapy session, or like the type of massage or the type of things that are actually moving from a place that is 
higher and bigger than you. So when you're making those, those decisions, you're kind of like co-creating those decisions with something bigger than you. And the only way to really do that, to actually like find the tools that work or to actually find the path or, or the job or whatever it is that actually serves your highest, highest, truest self. Cause I believe that our truest self is our highest self. Um, in order to do that, the practice of being in silence is of the utmost important. There's nothing more important than being able to be alone with your thoughts in silence and with not your thoughts. So what I mean by that is there's two things. There's being able to be in silence and just breathing and really focusing on breath and that being the focus. And there's also just being able to be in silence, whether like thoughts are coming up or not coming up, you know, like if you're thinking about something like being able to actually sit with it, listen to what is coming up for you. And maybe journaling is like something that goes really well. Like it goes hand in hand with being in silence. Cause sometimes like, at least for me, like I will think about a lot of, a lot of these things and it's like, okay, in order for me to really process and internalize it in like my cells, I sometimes need to write it, write whatever came through. Um, and I know that this may sound woo woo. I I might have lost some of you guys already, (laughs) but Um, and I will probably continue to just talk about silence for the rest of my life because I just know how incredibly it's like, it's sacred and it's potent. It's like the silence is the most potent thing you can do. It's the thing that can probably make the biggest impact in your life. Um, simply because the universe communicates through silence. So my overarching theme of being able to create space, being able to create silence is really the ultimate thing being so that I can communicate with the universe and co-create my life in a way that is in full, full, full alignment. And again, that really, that only happens when we can be still, when we can be silent. And, and this is, a really hard thing to do. So I'm not just saying like, everyone, like, let's go be silent. And it's a super easy thing. And no, it's, it's actually extraordinarily difficult because of the culture that we live in. We are in, in a distracted nation. And I genuinely believe that this like scattered mind, this like scatteredness is what makes us make these decisions that ultimately hurt other people because they're not, they're not decisions that are made in full silence and full communication with higher being. You can call that God, you can call it universe, you can call it whatever you want to call it. But, and, and the function of just like the fact that we live in this, in this time period where the distractions are out of control, like truly at any given point, we can be distracted. We can have that immediate gratification of like, oh shit, how did that thought that really didn't feel good? Let me immediately just look at this Instagram account to quell that, that feeling in my stomach or like if I'm feeling that stress in my throat. Like we have the distraction of focusing or obsessing about something that's just like not actually a true thing. Um, and the practice is it's, not something that I would say, like all of a sudden, you know, you go from zero to hundred and you're able to be in silence with yourself all the time. It is really uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, but you know, what's more uncomfortable in my opinion is spending your entire life always wondering like, why, why do I always feel like nothing is enough? Or like, why do I always feel like things feel empty? Or like, I keep doing all these things. I keep going through all these like external validation type things. And they, nothing feels like it's like grabbing. Nothing feels like it like has that substance. And to me personally, that is way more uncomfortable to live my whole life. This one life in that mindset and that arena, than choosing right now to do something that's uncomfortable and also doing it in a way that is, is not so drastic that I can't sustain it, but slowly just choosing things, choosing things that I can track towards being more comfortable in the silence so that I can ultimately make decisions that don't have that like emptiness, like continue to do and not grasp, but actually make decisions that feel like they're whole. 
like that they feel the opposite of empty, which is whole. Like they feel true. They feel like they have longevity. They feel like they feel in full alignment because those decisions that happen when you are able to sit with something for longer are whole because they're coming from wholeness. So the only way to be able to access that, which we all have the capacity to access that every single one of us has the capacity to access that because we come from that. So in order to access what is already our birthright, we just need to sit in silence. And this sounds kind of like a woo woo, like, okay, Sophie, what does sitting in silence mean? And it could mean a million different things for different people. I'm going to show examples of how I practice choosing silence every single day of my life. Um, this works for me. And again, like this is not to do what, what I'm saying. Like I have, this has been years of trying a million different things that some have worked, some haven't. Um, but for me, like, I, I also want to kind of like set the tone of like where I was coming from, because like my whole entire life, like noise and distraction and like comparison and all these things that that was my norm all the time. And of course, like I never felt enough. I never felt like, like anything that I did was enough. I could achieve all these different things. I could have the company, I could do all these things and it didn't feel like enough. And it was because the decisions that I was making were made not from silence. They were made from comparison. They were made from ego. They were made from a belief system that has been basically like poured on me from the moment that I was born, that all of these external things are what value you. And having to unlearn that and doing the work to unlearn all of those things. And honestly, being in silence has helped a ton with being able to unlearn that. But doing that work and actually like showing up and finding the things in my life where I could slowly start to pay attention to what feels a little bit more whole. Like that is where the shift starts to happen. So I, I would just wanted to set the tone of like where I'm coming from. I was not like, in, I was probably the most distracted, the most scatter brained. And I'm not saying that that doesn't happen now. Like 1000%, like still catch myself in moments where I'm like on an Instagram rabbit hole or like, I could find my mind in like a comparison situation or it, it, it always, it still flares up, but like the difference of how it flares up now versus how it did when I was completely asleep to this is it's completely transformative. So again, setting the tone of how, of where I started was I, I always grew up around noise. Like my sister and I, well, growing up, actually, my parents didn't let us watch TV in the, in the room, which I think that on some level, when I got a little bit older, I was like, I wanted to watch TV in the room because I wasn't allowed to, you know, growing up, but whatever. So in like my later childhood to like, um, high school, college, et cetera, I watched TV every single night to go to sleep. Like I would watch friends. Friends was like, the lullaby. And that is what would help me go to, go to sleep. I took that with me to college. I took that with me to New York. Um, and I just absolutely like, I could only fall asleep with that noise. So, um, when I moved in with my partner, he was really adamant about not sleeping with a TV in the room. And it was one of like those first fights when we decided to move in together that I was like, I, need, I need the TV in the room. Like I have to, like, I love a cozy morning watching a show. Like I, I can't really like imagine going to sleep without watching friends. It's just bizarre to me. We decided to not have the TV in the room. And then those first, I would say like the first like week and a half to two weeks was very weird for me. I felt bizarre. Like what it felt like was just absolutely awkward and bizarre. And it's like, I remember that feeling of like, okay, it's time to go to sleep. Like silence, like what like weird, bizarre. Like it made me feel like I, I'm thinking about that feeling right now. And I feel like this pit in my stomach. Oh, it felt like really, really uncomfortable that lasted for, I, I, I promise you like a week and a half to two weeks, absolute max. And then what happened was that I experienced like the absolute best sleep of my life. And sleep is, I can do a whole other podcast and my thoughts on sleep, but sleep is so incredibly important. And in that, that was like one of those 
first things that I started to be able to be in silence and like notice like, okay, I'm okay. And not only am I okay, I'm sleeping better than I've ever slept. So something about this is tracking, right? So like, that's what I mean by trying things on for yourself and then seeing how it feels because I can talk to someone blue in the face, but until you actually try something and give yourself an honest shot of like trying something and see if it works for you or not, what I'm saying isn't going to resonate. Like you have to try it on for yourself. That was one of those things that was like, okay, noise, 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 friends all the time. Like every single night before I went to sleep to all of a sudden silence before I went to sleep, awkward for a week and a half to two weeks, all of a sudden I'm sleeping literally better than ever. I'm like, okay, there's something to this. Like, fine. You're right. Like I sleep better with no, no TV in the room. Like, okay. Then I'm trying to think of other areas. Oh, there was like this time in my life. Like, I mean, you guys know, I love podcasts. Like I clearly, I have a podcast. I do love consuming content, uh, consciously. Like I love, I love listening to people that are really respects voices that I feel like is also coming from a higher power. And all those people, by the way, spend a lot of time in silence, but I really do love listening to podcasts. There was a time in my life where I literally would shower and I have like a little caddy or I had a little caddy in my shower in New York. And I would put my phone in, in inside the shower with me and I would listen to a podcast while I showered. Like I literally could not be in silence. Like the shower is probably most of you that are listening. The only place in your life right now that you actually find silence, or if you take baths, which is a new thing for me, I'll also probably do some sort of solo on baths because, Oh my God, like this is a new thing for me. And it's a game changer. But like showering is probably the only time that most of us have in silence. And I literally could not be in silence, even in the shower and masqueraded as like, oh, I'm I'm like listening to something that's informative. I'm listening to something that like I'm excited to listen to. And and like that's the thing about like being really in tune is that like even though I was listening to things that feed my soul, like nothing can feed your soul more than being in silence. And like a shower is such a, like, it's such a time to be by yourself and just to literally be in silence. I was robbing myself of that. But when I caught myself in that, I actually made a promise to myself when I was trying to find these pockets of silence where I could, where I could lean in and try to get comfortable, like have that one week to week and a half to two week period of feeling uncomfortable. So then getting back to normal, I like vowed to myself that for the rest of my life, I will shower in silence. And that was like one of those commitments that I just made. And sometimes I still, I want to listen to music and, and I'm not saying that I will absolutely never, ever. I haven't, I don't think since I made that vow. Uh, so I'm also trying to be a little bit softer with myself and not be so like black and white and rigid, but having, um, chosen to have that space, like 1000% game changer, a lot of the best ideas I've ever had, which a lot of us can experience, because again, most of us, like the shower is the only time that we're not on Instagram, that we're not on TikTok, that we're not consuming newsletters, emails, phone calls, text messages, WhatsApp group chats, um, Netflix, like it's really for the most part, the only time that the majority of us can actually tap into that. And most of us have our best ideas in the shower. Like think of, think of like ideas that you've had. Some of those things have been literally like transformative for me that come through in the shower. So started to pay attention to that, made that commitment to myself to shower in silence great. Another one was running. Like running is something that I feel like gives me so much clarity. I really enjoy running. I listen to music. I listen to podcasts. And like, because I started to notice that in the sleeping with silence and shower with silence was working for me, I craved in those runs where I felt clarity, I craved moments within that run to be in silence. So again, like this is about trying things on. It wasn't about like all of a sudden committing to four miles in silence. Like to me, that sounds like pure torture. Like I, I absolutely would not want to subscribe to that. However, I have found myself running and in the middle of the run, literally just wanting to turn my AirPods off for five minutes in that run and listen to the leaves, to the people if there's a cafe I'm running by, I want to hear like, you know, like the, the commotion of what's happening. Listen to my breath, listen to my feet, like moving. 
connect, connect with my body. Like it, it, it was asking that of me. So I would take my AirPods off, put them in like my, in my Lululemons, there's like, or all over Lululemons. There's like that little like sleeve. I would just put them in that sleeve and run for five minutes until I felt like, okay, like I I'm good. I want to go back to listening to my podcast or music, whatever. But again, like a little pocket of silence. Um, another one is eating meals in silence. This one is hard. <laughs> this one is really hard. I still struggle with this one, to be honest. I eat my meals in silence and sometimes I really don't want to. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh, but I really just want to watch Emily in Paris, like, you know, while I'm eating this or, um, I do listen to like instrumental music sometimes when I eat by myself. Um, but eating in silence is one of those things that like, it has helped my digestion so much. And I believe that in order to communicate and like really create space in your body, digestion is such an important key to that. Because if we hold on to those toxins in our body, it just takes longer for it to eliminate and get out of our our system. And it creates toxicity within the body, which goes into the brain and the mind. And it, it makes it actually a lot harder to communicate with your higher self or to communicate with universe or whatever. So going back to why's on why I do things whenever I'm like feeling resistance or that I don't want to eat in silence. I know I've actually witnessed and felt within myself that when I eat in silence, I digest so much better, if you know what I mean. And, um, I feel so much lighter. I don't feel bloated. I feel energized. A lot of the times when I would eat, like watching something, it's like your body doesn't connect and doesn't know that you're actually eating. And then I would still feel hungry after, or I would feel like I, I overate because I actually wasn't paying attention to what I was eating. And then I would get really tired after. And so because I, I eat in silence, I see my plate. I see every single thing that's on there. I'm watching every single thing that's going into my body. I'm like name, like I, my brain is probably like, that's rice, that's zucchini, that's avocado, that's bread, whatever it is that I'm eating. It's like clicking. Like we need to slow down to give our mind and our body a chance to communicate, to like understand what's happening. And for the function of eating, for me, it's the function of being able to digest my food in a, in a way more efficient and like nourishing way ultimately to layer up to my biggest goal, which is to consistently be able to communicate with my highest self in and communicate with the universe in a seamless way. Right. So always going back to the why behind doing anything that's uncomfortable. And let me just say that out of all the ones that I'm talking about right now, eating in silence for me has been the hardest one, harder than sleeping without friends, harder than running in silence, harder than anything has been the eating thing, because my whole, like, again, like similar to the friends thing, like my whole life, I would watch a show, watch a YouTube video, watch, um, anything like watch a movie, watch whatever, whatever thing was like the content that I wanted to do while eating and like consciously choosing to not do that. And like still watching the content that I love to watch. But like when I'm watching that content, I'm watching that content when I'm eating, I want my body to know that I'm eating. Like I want my body to know what is going in and how, it, how it's going to process so that it can eliminate, like, so it can first nourish and then eliminate. So that there's more space within my body. So silence and space go very much hand in hand. And in order to continue to create that space, like spaces where all that like magic, what, where that like, uh, insight kind of like comes and downloads into you, like they go hand in hand. So I'm not suggesting like every meal eat in silence. Like I started with like one of my meals in the day or, or like if that's like even too much, like one a day, like one meal a week, literally, like I'm going to choose that on this lunch day, I'm just going to eat in silence. It is really fucking uncomfortable. In my opinion, the more like quickly that you do it, like when, if you like commit to doing, I don't know, a week straight, straight of, um, eating in silence, in my experience, it helped me get more used to it quicker. Again, everyone like do whatever feels good for you in a way that like you think is sustainable for you. Every single person has like a different barometer for what that is. Um, 
but yeah, it can be, it can be anywhere from like just choosing to eat all your meals in silence to choosing to have one meal a week in silence. Um, and in that one meal a week that you're having in silence, literally looking at your plate, thanking everything that's on your plate for nourishing your body, your soul, your cells, thanking it, and then wishing for it to do its job and to eliminate efficiently. <laughs> like, I know, I, I feel like sometimes when I say these things, I sound like a little woo woo crazy, but it's not woo woo crazy. It's like literally that, like, we've kind of like, I hate that I even said that because it's like, we've marketed those things as woo woo as like, Oh, like this is like, so, um, alternative. It's like, no, what we're doing as a collective is alternative to what actually is our truth. (laughs) So just because the majority of us have been subscribing to an alternative way to truth does not mean that it is not the truth. Like the truth is in sitting in silence. So Anything other than that is actually alternative. So I actually take back what I just said about being woo woo, which I have to check myself a lot on that because when, when you're doing things and this, this has come up for me, like when I've decided to be in silence in different situations, if I go on a family trip and I'm like, I actually need to meditate before I start my day. Like it it is essential for me. If I want to communicate with higher power, with my highest self to show up as the absolute best version of myself. And I'm the only one in my family that meditates like that. Like you could, it could, you can easily fall under this thing of like, well, I don't want to be othered. Like, I don't want to feel like the outcast, but what I ask myself is what do I want more to maybe feel a little bit like other in this tiny circumstance, or do I not want to connect with what it feels like to feel like my highest self? And I will always choose always every single time. I'm always going to choose to feel like my highest self, because it's not only a better existence for me, it's a better existence for every single person that's around me. So if I'm choosing other, and I hope in my lifetime, I get to see that like the majority of us are living this way, but if not, that's totally fine too. If I'm other for the rest of my life, but I'm also for the rest of my life, choosing things that are truth. That's, that's the commitment that I have to myself. And then the last one that I wanted to talk about is meditation. And my, my journey with meditation has been like, if it was a graph, it would literally look like, like this, you know, it's not one of those things that you all of a sudden it clicks and that's it. Meditation also has so many different like forms, right? But I love, and, and in the last episode I did with Carly Fane, she talks about not being attached to the fun to be not being attached to the form, but being attached to the function of something. Right. And the function of all meditations is sitting in silence. Right. So that is the function. The form does not matter. You can do Kundalini. You can do a walking yoga. You can, even though I really do believe in like sitting, I personally believe in sitting in silence, but you could do walking meditations. You could do Kundalini. You can do transcendental meditation. You can do in for four, hold for four, out for four. You can do a plethora of meditations, but not being attached to the form of what it is, but being attached to the function. And for me, meditating in the morning is absolutely critical. Like it is a non-negotiable. It is a commitment that I have to myself. And it's just like that first moment that's setting the tone for the entire day. And if you start out with two minutes, that's totally fine. If you start out with one minute, that's totally fine. If you start out with five minutes, seven minutes, whatever it is that feels good or or not even good, but like attainable to you that you can commit to actually doing one to two minutes every single day of sitting with your sitting in silence. That is to me like that's probably the thing that any of us can do that will yield truly the most rewarding and whole results versus those empty quick fix type things that, that like, I don't know, like it's marketed to us literally all day long. Like if we can find a practice that we can commit to. And for me, meditation is one of those things that is an absolute non-negotiable. I 
I will choose that for the rest of my life because I know what it has done for me. Because like I said, in that 2022 double down on what works, scale back on what doesn't meditating works for me, meditating. And every day it looks different. Like I said, my, my journey with meditation has been completely different. For a time, I wasn't using mala beads. Now I'm using mala beads. Maybe I won't use mala beads down the road. For a time, I was doing full body check-ins, like checking with my mind, body, soul, spirit, everything. Like not doing that anymore. For a time, I use mantras. I am using mantras right now. Um, for a time, I was doing guided. I was actually doing guided to start for years, probably like a year and a half to two years, literally guided. Melissa Wood House guided meditations. That's what started my meditation journey. And having someone guide you, which has also been a reflection in my running journey, having coach B from the Nike run club app guide me, like finding guides to get you to a certain point, And then like feeling like you've connected with something on a deeper level that you want to explore what it's like to do it on your own. That is what has worked for me. And like, you can feel free to try that on if that resonates with you. Um, what I like about at least my meditation practice is that it's first thing in the morning. So it's like, I don't look at my phone. I don't do anything. It is the first thing that I do in the day. I'll make my water with lemon and immediately while I'm making that water, by the way, I like set up my meditation station, come meditate. And I, right now I just like leave it open-ended. Like I'm like, whatever happens in this meditation is exactly what's supposed to happen. I don't really like force whatever it is. What I commit to is just sitting there for how, whatever comes through. And that's the commitment. So I'm probably going to talk about silence for the rest of my life, which is such an oxymoron, two things living in the same thing. It's like, I'm speaking and I'm speaking about silence. (laughs) So, um, my hope is that something about this silence resonates and that you, you question like, where are the areas in my life where I could like explore maybe a tiny bit of silence or maybe this meal I'll do half silence, half content, or maybe my coffee in the morning is going to be in silence or just explore, explore what that looks like. Give it an honest period of time. Um, give it an honest period of time and then check in with yourself. Like, how does that feel? And know that it's going to feel really uncomfortable for some time. And then it is like one of those things that you're like, I can't imagine living myself, living my life without this being a part of like this silence being a part of my everyday existence. Um, and that is everything that I have for you right now. Um, I'm again, probably going to do more episodes on silence. Let me know what you think about video and audio. Um, if you have any suggestions on topics that you want to hear me talk about, um, let me know. And I'm wishing you guys space and silence. Um, and really just consistently wishing for every single human to connect to their higher self because we all have the exact same capacity. So with that, I hope you have a beautiful week. I hope that on some level, something here has resonated if it's meant to resonate with you right now. And if it's meant to resonate with you right now, it absolutely will. I'm sure of that. And um, I'm sending you all so much love.